Now, it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker. Perry Marshall is an entrepreneur, author, speaker, and consultant who advises technology companies on product definition, marketing, and new customer acquisition. He specializes in control systems and communications, and in the automation industry, actively works with major journals, vendors, and networking trade organizations. That's a lot of stuff to say that Perry is a very busy man. He has a uh, BS and double E from the University of Nebraska, and he's the author, along with John Rinaldi, of the book, The Industrial Ethernet, which you can see here. Perry is also the author of the highly acclaimed The Ultimate Guide to Google AdWords, available to you on his corporate website, perrymarshall.com. Perry lives in Berwyn and with his wife is raising four children. Today's talk will discuss how digital concepts that enable binary code to traverse the internet also apply to DNA. That DNA is really a digital information system and communications protocol. After Perry's presentation, there will be a time for Q&A. Please join me now in welcoming Perry Marshall. Do you pull up my slide? Uh, thank you guys for coming today. It's great to, ha great to have you here. Um, and uh, um, I, I think that uh, that uh, the the discover the biggest discoveries usually um, come from unusual and unpredicted places. I think it's why it's why um, um, some of the biggest new innovations come from people that are total outsiders. You know, when 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 Bill Gates and and his uh, and his friends uh, became successful in the software business. You know, they had not come from the old mainframe world uh, when Google. Uh, came out of nowhere and to become the biggest search engine in the world uh, all the other guys were already established but uh, as those of you guys who have uh, pay attention to this sort of thing you might know that uh, Larry and Sergey who came up with a whole Google concept their their idea came out of a paper um, or, or out of a research project to study um, how citations um, in academic journals were an indication of the success of a paper. So if a, if a paper got cited a whole bunch of times by a whole bunch of different articles, it meant that it was important. And they discovered by accident that that was a great concept for a search engine. And so they came up with this PageRank concept, and, and, uh, and here we are, you know, Google's an $11 billion company. Um, and similarly, I, I, insights about um, biological things can come from interesting places, as, as I will talk about. Um, I remember when I was uh, studying electrical engineering, um, uh, before that I'd been, I was an audio geek. I designed and built speakers and, and audio equipment. And um, you know, when I was in junior and high, in high school and I was trying to figure out all, how all that stuff works, um, I, I was very perplexed about the difference between uh, what a, say what a resistor does and what an inductor or capacitor does because the math the, the math that I understood didn't seem to explain that and it wasn't until I got into college and I discovered imaginary numbers and a whole bunch of math that that's probably a little over the head of most high school sophomores um, that oh well actually this is this is very different than what you thought and you know, inductors and capacitors don't store energy, or don't don't uh, dissipate energy, or at least they're not supposed to. Um, but uh, but there was a lot of things that were counterintuitive. They became intuitive once I I got to a high enough level of, of understanding things. Now, um, uh, so. I'm sure I'm not much different than most of you. You've, uh, we've all been listening to people uh, debate the origin of life and creation and evolution and all that kind of stuff. Probably all of us since we were kids, um, and um, you know that whole thing about inductance and capacitance and resistance and whatever uh, made me realize that some things that are counterintuitive can actually work anyway. And so, if somebody brought up the subject of evolution, my, my, intuitive, my, my intuition said, well, I don't see how order can come from chaos, or I don't, I don't, I don't see how um, life could come out from random accident, uh, and that's my intuition, but I also knew that that might not be correct. I also knew that 
if I went and studied biology someplace, I might learn all kinds of things that would, that would change that point of view. And so for a long, a long time, I just didn't know. And I, I, didn't, I was in no hurry to get into any arguments or discussions about this with anybody because I knew I didn't know. Okay, um, and I think a lot of us can relate to that. Well, uh, tell you a little story as 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 things uh, progressed. Um, let me let me let me tell you a, a little story, and then I'll I'll take a step backwards. Um, this is a picture of a bus. Um, this is a Chinese version of bus, not an American version of bus. Um, that I, I was on this trip with my brother. My brother moved to China about six or seven years ago, and he lived there for four years. And while my, and he's two years younger than me, and while he was in China, he grew up. Um, you know, there's something about leaving home and living in a foreign culture and having to fend for yourself for a long time that kind of tends to make a, a person learn new things. And Brian moved to China, and he grew up. And... Um, Part of his growing up was, uh, you know, reevaluating all kinds of things. And one of the things that he reevaluated was, gee, you know what? The world might have taken longer than six days to make. Imagine that. Now, I'd kind of got used to that idea a lot longer before he did, but he was kind of really went all the way to the other extreme. And so, and we got into this argument about creation evolution, which is an argument that I wasn't all that comfortable having in the first place. And he asked me a bunch of questions that really, really, really made me think. And I'm like, well, gee, I don't know. Maybe he's right. And I thought, there's got to be a way to get to the bottom of this. There's, there's, there's got to be some underlying principle that can be uh, validated or explored here. And so... Um, this little this argument that Brian and I had in a Chinese bus um, turned into a whole exploration. I'm going to explore this today with you. Um, is life random? Is where did life come from? You know, the first cell. Where did that come from? Is evolution random? Um, communication theory and implications for DNA. Um, new directions for the origins debate. Um, I, w after Brian and I had this discussion, um, I became very interested in this topic and I started researching it like crazy. Started buying books, I started surfing the web, and the first thing, the first thing that I discovered was, man, when you bring up this topic, the first thing you find is a whole bunch of people screaming at each other. Like, just screaming at each other. Oh, creationists are all idiots. Evolutionists are all idiots. And, you know, when, when you encounter a debate, and, and that's the first thing you find, is a whole bunch of people just, you know, lobbing Molotov cocktails at each other, um, it, it kind of suggests that, well, you know, maybe, maybe there's a subtlety here that's getting missed in the midst of all this yelling and screaming and arguing. And, and, and really, I, all the screaming and arguing, I thought, was very nauseating. Uh, there's just a lot of people insulting each other and very little real dialogue go going along. But I said, okay, you know, I've, I've been in multiple professions. I've mastered multiple disciplines. And anything you go into, there's a set of basic principles that governs everything. So what is it here? Okay? And I discovered, um, in, as, as I was reading and searching... That, um, that everything that I already knew about digital communication, I have, a, I have a degree in electrical engineering, I specialize in communication systems and control systems, I designed emotional feedback systems when I worked at Jensen, the speaker manufacturer, then later uh, I had this other job where I, I worked at a company that sold uh, uh, network controller cards for industrial networks. If I, I doubt words like device net, profibus, interbus, s, as, interface, or modbus would mean very much to most people in this room, but some of you would know what those things are. And I spent uh, several years um, dealing with engineers and figuring out, well, you know, what kind of digital communication protocol should you use for your assembly line? And we sold the 
Ford and Chrysler and Applied Materials and all these different companies. 